So, our mental health specialist for Men's Health Thursdays, Ms. Pooja Parikh. She's a licensed psychotherapist with a license in clinical social work and a board-certified behavior analyst with a private practice in New York City. She has over 10 years of providing comprehensive mental health services to individuals, couples, and children with trauma, PTSD, depression, anxiety, just to name a few things. Basically, guys, she's pretty much the shit, the bomb. Happy Thursday. How you doing, buddy? I am doing wonderful. Glad to be here. Glad to be here as well. And this is actually Men's Health Thursdays. Health. Is that what I said? Men's Health? Isn't it Men's Health? Yes, it's Men's Health. We, do we need to work out, talk about health? Yeah, we do. We is definitely it, do. Is that important? It's very important. Why is it important? It's uh, important because we ignore it. I think we only pay attention to our physical, not our mental. And I think we need to start working on that. I mean, us, when it comes to the, I think the black community, black men, we don't talk about our mental health. We, we, we stay in the gym. <laughs> we stay getting them gains. We do. We do, right? We, but we, we want to look good. We're going to look good. And we also want to play good. I mean, we're great, we're great in sports. Yeah, we are. But we suck when it comes to dealing with our, our pent up emotions and feelings and, and dealing with how to, hang, how to handle uh, PTSD. Because I think we suffer from that. We just don't know it. I grew up in a single uh, parent household. Okay. All right. So I grew up with a single parent and, you know, my mom was, you know, mom and dad. But, yo, she when she played dad, it was pretty rough. Gotcha. <laughs> pretty rough. Uh, pretty physical. And plus, she's an island woman. Okay. But, uh, so we've had this discussion before. So she would use, a, a, a you know, the belt. She, the belt had a name called Blackie. It was, a, it was a leather belt. It was called black. I guess it was black. It was yes, it, exactly. It was black. So it was like black on black crime. Damn it! Gosh, damn it, Ma. Now to think about it, we we had the belt. Yeah, we had the switches. We oh. had a switch switches. Yeah. We had the back of the hand. We mm-hmm. had the shoe. We had the extension cord. Yeah, uh, just whatever was around. Whatever, <laughs> whatever was around was well, okay. I got you. So which which is needed? But when I talked to you, we talked this. Before we both had this thing that we wanted to do, um, discussing mental health, discussing health for men, period. Because right. at our age, um, which we're getting a little higher up there, we have to start going to the doctor, which we don't do. We, um, I don't. I just say I'm Superman and I don't go. Even though I see like Chadwick Boseman had passed away that had the colon cancer. So it's things like that that make you come back to reality to, to – you know that you're not vulnerable. You're not invincible. You're it, re- so- it reminds us of uh, what we what we need to do. You yes, know, to take care of ourselves, uh, which is not just pushing weights because that's physical. You can't really see what's going on internally when it comes to as far as cancer and whatnot. Getting blood regularly ch- checked and whatnot. Right, and also I can tell you this: in our family, we had uh, one of my cousins. He mm-hmm. there was something off about him. Right. Yeah, and um, we always just said. You know, cousin so and so, he just slow. Yeah. You know, but we didn't know what was up with him. You didn't know why he was. We didn't slow. know, and we just we just said he was slow. Yeah. And we let him be who we who he was, but yeah. at the same time, there was no understanding of what condition he actually was. Yeah. What so was you, going- you, 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 you. I mean, yeah, the black culture is almost that's what we say we say slow instead of diagnosing what it really is yes we just use the word slow, slow. you I mean, get there he's slow he's just slow yeah which and, is offensive yeah. highly offensive but i mean there's a lot of kids i remember they would always just say like uh-huh. you know little johnny over there he you know he's slow that's mm-hmm. just how you know johnny is but we didn't know or if somebody was like um hyper yeah you know johnny johnny had too much sugar yeah, but exactly. we didn't know he we, might he might have had ADHD had, or something a, like that. Right? Exactly, we had yeah. no way of knowing. Just and we wouldn't do a checkup. No, I mean, it, like you said, we didn't go to the doctor. Well, we don't ever go to the doctor, and I think it has a lot to do with the past too. I mean, we 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 there's a lot of things that have happened with doctors and experiments with the black culture, uh, with the with the Tuskegee st- experiments that were 
performed and everything dealing with slavery going back there and all these experiments that were done. And I think a big hoodoo voodoo thing has been created as a big stigma, as, you know, as far as stay away from the doctor. Once you go to the doctor, they're going to give you cancer. They're going to give you a disease. And we've seen that, too, with people that I've, I've heard before stories of people being completely healthy and going to the doctor and finding out that they have riddled with tumors, tumors and they end up dying in, uh, a week, two weeks, or two months later. So, but also, also um, yeah, one, one important com- component that we're missing as well is financial. Yes, uh, we we didn't have the money. Well, exactly. You know, and I remember going to the doctor one time, and I just had a, a laceration on my head, and end up we ended up getting the band aid. Yeah, and it cost sixty bucks. My mom said. Next time you go to the doctor, you better be dying. Wow. That's true. And that is true. I mean, and that's for anything. That's for dental and anything. But again, yeah, like you said, it's, it's, it has to do with economics. Yes. Right? It has definitely. to do with economics. And also, again, with men's health, that's what we're going to touch on too. We're going to talk with what, financial experts and stuff to teach us how to move our money, uh, even at this age. So, but speaking on the mental, um, we actually have a special um, guest. She's going to help us men Get our get our stuff together. She's gonna help with, help us with our mind to get our minds right. She's gonna help us deal with our spouses. She's gonna help us deal with our children. She's gonna help us deal with our inner demons because we all suffer from it. Um, you know, I have little symptoms of you know I have points where I have depression and I don't know why. Yes. And I'm like, why? You know, I'm, I have all these things I should be grateful for. Some of us can get us out of our, our funks, and some of us aren't capable of doing it and seeking help. And I think. It's not the manly thing to do to seek someone with a white coat or go go lay on someone's couch and tell them your problems right? if they're not your boys. Um, So anyway, our health specialist, um, Ms. Pooja Parikh, she's she's a licensed psychotherapist and she's licensed as well as a clinical social work and a board certified behavior analyst. And she also has a private practice in New York. She has over 10 years of providing comprehensive mental health services, individual couples, and with children with training with trauma, PST, PSTD, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, just na- just to name a few. Basically, guys, she's the shit. She's the bomb, right? Uh, Pooja, would you please introduce yourself to the people? And uh, so, so basically, what exactly is that you do to sum it up for us? Sure. I am so glad you're letting me jump in here. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, we let people jump. Hey, whoever wants to jump in this, this, yeah. this shallow water, Thank you. we're pretty shallow here. <laughs> save, um, save us. We can't swim. I, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty well, shallow no, water. That, that was a very nice intro. Thank you for having me. Um, yes, as um, as you heard, my name is Pooja Parikh. I'm a licensed psychotherapist uh, with a background in clinical social work as uh, well as a board certified behavior analyst. And I do have a private practice out in New York City. So I see, you know, a a lot of people, um, actually a lot of people of color tend to gravitate towards me. I find that that is also something that I am able to, I guess, become one of the demographics that I have connected with um, as well. Why do uh, you... Culturally. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. Why do you you think people of color seem to to gravitate to you? Is it because because you're a person of color as well? They feel safe? Yeah, so I actually had, yeah, a lot of people just say, like, you know, I'm looking um, to have a therapist that either shares a specific cultural background or can look like me or has Mm -hmm. some, you know, idea what it's like to not be the majority um, or to kind of feel like the other. So um, that has been some of the reasons I've, I've, you know, had people reach out. I do also work with um, a lot of people that are, you know, they're white, they're couples that are millennials, Mm -hmm. gosh, the Gen Xers. I mean, you know, there's, there's a variety of uh, different people that I see in my practice. I see kids who are, you know, on the autism spectrum or that I've diagnosed um, or adults that come in and there's a lot of things that they present with. And really the underlying issue is that they've never been diagnosed with ADHD. And that's something that I work with them on um, and then coordinate that care. Um, there are a lot of people, you know, that come in with trauma or just, you know, growing up a specific way. So there's this, and it's not in our, um, you know, mental health uh, practitioners use. And, you know, I want to point out, I do like the fact that you guys use the word health specialist, because I do think that when we take away that, like, separation of mental health and health, that takes a little bit of that stigma off. And also, the mind is an important, important part of your 
whole being. I don't know why we treat it so separately. I mean, everything is regulated in your mind. Your body does what your mind tells it to do. Um, every, you know, connection, your nerves are so connected through your entire body, but they all go back to your brain. So um, that is an important thing for us to think about is that the fact that we have this whole different um, side to, you know, mental health versus health, and, and that is the reason why a lot of doctors – well, insurance models too because of the time restrictions. But when you go for a yearly physical, they're not really going to fully pay attention and screen you for depression or anxiety or other maybe underlying health concerns. Um, more often than not, a lot of men, uh, especially uh, men, you know, that can, that come from non um, non white cultures um, yeah. like Asian, you know, uh, Black American, you know, have, what have you, they tend to describe a lot of their emotional distress through physical symptoms. Um, so it'll be like, oh, you know, like my neck's always hurting. I always have this pain. We'll go to the doctor, but there's never really a physical reason found uh, because it's easier to say, hey, I have a headache constantly than to say I'm just not feeling good because it's not considered their, their idea of being a man in their culture, mm-hmm. you know. Gotcha. Um, I mean, a lot of people I see didn't grow up sitting around the dining table talking about feelings and how was your day and what did you do? How could you have done that differently? But uh, isn't yeah. that isn't that changing now with uh, uh, like as far as like uh, people being seen more as far as issues with the uh, like mental health, even yeah. because of like, I mean, I don't want to thank the NFL, but like, you know, what guys having um, mm-hmm. um, when they get hit in the head and the, the helmet safety concussions, and, concussions yeah. and all that, that's uh, put a spotlight on as far as mental health, as far as how athletes are being uh, affected from that. So. Absolutely. Um, it, you know, it's interesting. I actually was on a podcast a little while ago that, that uh, specifically um, was about traumatic brain injury. Uh-huh. And it's often overlooked. So when I do intakes with new, new patients or clients, you know, that want to come in, I'll ask, like, you know, what's your physical history? Like, do you have any other? Did you ever have, have like, an injury to your head? Did uh-huh. you ever fall down? Did you ever have... Um, you know, blood work done recently because sometimes what we see um, manifest itself is like depression could be certain like, you know, vitamin deficiencies. It could be that maybe you're low in vitamin uh, Bs, your B12, folate, magnesium often. So, you know, all these things, if, if you have iron deficiency, it can look and feel a lot like depression and anxiety. Um, so I always sort of ask and I always encourage, like, you know, you should go through that full physical. Let's just get that taken care of so we know that there's nothing else. Um, but of course we want to focus then on, on also the emotional health part of it, which is let's talk about sort of, you know, what else is going on that you think might be making you feel this way. Um, but it, but it is, and oftentimes depending on where you're hit, um, in the head, if there's repeated trauma to your, your certain regions, uh, the concussions oftentimes don't, you won't see a result for like maybe two years after um, because it just could be that mild or it's just not as apparent, but you'll see a decline in two years. People don't often, you know, take it very seriously if like certain tests are normal or, um, and let's be real, not every, if you're an athlete, you're going to get the full workup, right? You're going right. to get that MRI, the brain scan, you're getting, you're getting it all. But Mm -hmm. if you're just like, you're like me, right, Right. I'm going to go in with a concern. They're going to start with, okay, let's just take your blood work. Let's do this. Then maybe if it's like really, really serious, we'll get that like authorization uh, from your insurance to to do like a full body scan. So how often should a person get um, a a mental test or how often should that happen for like just a regular person? I mean, just how often should that happen? It should definitely be a part of your yearly physical, you know, if you're going. Um, there, there are, there is some simple forms. You can access them online. I am always careful to also say, though, you know, because they're just, they're not diagnostic tools. They're just ways for, they're scales, really, um, that, you know, you might see your doctor use or I use uh, when people come in just to get a sense of where or the severity of the symptoms are. So, for example, um, there is something called the Patient Health Questionnaire, PHQ-9, which sim- like looks for symptoms of, like, depression mm, and gotcha. the severity. And then there's one 
called um, the Generalized Anxiety Disorder 7, GAD 7. And it'll ask you a couple of questions and it just checks for the core symptoms, um, you know, as per the diagnostic manual that we use for, for determining to meet that criteria for diagnosis of dep- or anxiety. And how much is it impacting you? Because you can feel down, but if you're like able to do everything you're doing, then maybe you just, you know, you need support, but you don't need the type of support that would look like maybe therapeutic support three times a week and medication. It might just be a milder. Um, and we can talk, you know, talk through that. So there's like different levels of care that get involved. Right. Um, but at least yearly, but at any time, I always tell, you know, my patients or, or even family and friends that you notice a difference in somebody or you notice a change in yourself, you should always sort of get that checked out because you just don't know. It could be hormonal. It could be um, just you're tired. Maybe your routine needs to be adjusted a little bit, right? Like you're not sleeping enough and you're just constantly on the go. Well, then sleep has a big impact on mood. Um, and so, or if something's happened recently, if you've been in a car accident or like something, you've witnessed something that, you know, is, is, um, where you felt really scared or you, you took on, like you've witnessed, you know, a fight or some sort of like an altercation or were involved in one, you always want to look out for the, the after effects of that because things can show up as far, like for PTSD could, mm-hmm. you know, show up six months down the line um, prior to that, it just can look like acute stress syndrome. So, which if it doesn't get resolved, you, it'll kind of continue on. And then you have like PTSD, which, you know, you will, you, there's just a lot of different symptoms. Um, so I, like, yeah. oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, 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 no, no, no. God, I can even, I can give you guys a link um, to the questionnaires. I use one that also looks for, like somatic, meaning like your body complaints, or uh-huh. are you having more issues with like it's the full PHQ? Um, you you know what I always encourage people to do is if I'm going to tell you you know if you're going through your physical, complete it. Uh, I'll print it out and I'll give it to them. I'll say here, fill this out, take it to your doctor. Or if they've done it for me, I will print it out and I'll say take this and then I'll write them a little bit of a letter to give their doctor because for some people they don't know how to. Um, bring it up, you know, mm-hmm. so it's easier if they're able to say, oh, you know, I'm working with somebody and this is, this is what I completed with them. Yeah. Um, they wanted me to just let you know this so that maybe if it's medically relevant for, you know, you can rule out things or check for something. Um, because certain biological, like physical conditions look like mental um, illnesses and there could, like you literally could have like a physical issue going on. Um, so, or, you know, if it's, um, mental illness, sometimes it looks like a physical, like muscle aches and pains, not to say that they're fake, they're happening, they're happening to the person that's experiencing it. They're just, they're just not finding a, um, physical reason for it, right, as to why, but there's, science isn't perfect, and there's still so many things, despite having blood tests, I mean, look at our, our conditions now with the novel COVID, um, yeah. coronavirus we're not with all of our technology with all of our knowledge we're not able to figure out how to fix it um which is this is you know often the case so i always encourage um especially you know women are a little bit more open about talking about that so i it's a little bit easier but for men i'll just go here fill, fill this out show me and then take it you know take this to your doctor on your visit and let them know especially if i think that there might be a need for medication um, to cons- you know, to consider just to help them get a little bit, bit better. So yeah. that, but there's other things like medication is something that I don't, you know, would be something I, I work with the person's cultural feelings about it, their spiritual ideas about it, because not everybody thinks, you know, I've had people tell me, no, you're just trying to sell me the, the white man's cure or, or you know, the, or their parents. <laughs> uh, <laughs> parents. Um, <laughs> So, you know, and yeah. it's just, and I hear that and I go, okay, yeah, yeah I could see, you know, where, <laughs> why you would feel that distrust, especially given the history and, you know, exactly. the background of this family that I worked with. Uh, so I approach it in a culturally sensitive way. I'm always careful not to use, um, you know, your autistic child or, your, it, you know, your, <laughs> it's not nice. And is, that, there, is there ever a time when you have to prescribe medicine for someone that you know even though that you, you probably don't want to but you have to there yeah there are times so i i am um since i'm not a uh, medical uh, doctor i can't prescribe but i do have um 
relationships with like psychiatrists that I'll refer to that I work closely with. Okay. And um, yeah, there are times that, you know, I've had to, uh, if I'm like, you know, this is way beyond you. A little bit yeah, like if yeah. you're just not getting, if you're not waking up in the morning, and sometimes it's just like you're you're not, you're not present, right? Like if you are coming to me, but you're not really fully able to practice any of the skills of relaxation that we do, um, a lot of the maybe the breathing techniques that I do, a lot of the uh, worksheets that really engages you into sessions. If you're not able to really absorb, because you're so anxious all the time, your mind isn't there then I often go, okay, you know what, let's try this, especially if they're, um, uh, then I might use a more standardized tool if I think there's more going on. And these standardized tests, basically, um, they're psychological tests, look for, you know, they'll give you a percentage or likelihood of how severe something is against uh, your peers. So it will, there's some that, you know, for depression, like um, that I've used that I've been able to, uh, you know, give my patient and tells me like if it's, you know, mild, moderate to severe, if there's suicidal ideations, that's when I usually uh, my go to is medication first. Which, so I want to collaborate with like, you know, a more comprehensive approach if there is a history of that um, history of any kind of like active ideations. I mean, people people will say I want to die or I wish I wasn't born, but that doesn't always mean that they're going to act on it. Right. So, you know, I, I, I weed that out and I assess and it's not often that it's, you know, an active thing. Yeah, it's usually what, a a cry for help more so, right? Right, or just how they're feeling is that I'm just feeling really fucking depressed. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm fucking cursing. No, you're good. I don't don't know if you're, you know, I'm a cursing. I am. Okay, I'm a sailor. I don't know how your Um, cursing would... Would would do with me, you know, being associated with me. I curse, I curse. So you're good. No, for the listeners, I don't know if it's. Oh no, it's all good. This is a man show. This is a man-driven show. There we go. That's that's the thing. I do tell people, you know, like I am. I'm very like honest. I do often curse, and some people like that. No, I I I think it's great because it 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 help. You know what? It makes you more so down to earth and relatable. Because if you come in and, and you're so. If you're being over professional or you're being professional with someone that's being so vulnerable and, and so yeah. casual with you, I think there there's a line, a border. I mean, I, obviously, yeah. there should be a professional line. But of course, when yeah. someone's sitting there telling you their most darkest thoughts and, and most vulnerable, um, you know, feelings and emotions or secrets and you're sitting there like, OK, you know, and you're just keeping yeah. it, keeping it too, too professional. I think, you know, they, they're not going to completely open up with you but i think if you're keeping it real and uh being yourself letting yourself come out a little bit i think they can relate yeah. to that and they, they'll i mean they would more so open up i would think i would i mean like i said the reason we were drawn to you is because yeah. just off the bat you're just just talking to you you seem real we, you know you didn't seem like hey you know i'm here you know i'm here and yeah. you people over there why, it was not it why, was you, a, why are you using that accent though because it just seems proper. Like, <laughs> it just seemed proper I'm British all of a sudden. yeah it just it was just it just seemed proper uh, out of your practice you see so how how much men like as far as that you see you would yeah. say is 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 in your practice percentage wise that you see that have um yeah. depression or, or mental issues would you say that's fifty oh, percent of your practice, or seventy percent? Probably more. Yeah. So I would say the the primary presenting problem tends to be anxiety yeah. um, and depression. So I would say about because that can also occur with some other issues that might just then we come across once I do more of a, of a, a comprehensive comprehensive evaluation. Okay. Um, but yeah, depression, anxiety is usually one of the number one to two things they can often happen together so yeah those are you know life transitions is another um yeah but i would say like 80 80 percent are men plus yeah see this is is why we need it this is why we need because 80 percent of her practice are are men men wow or men come in or or, or, um, we're messed up yeah well, no, you know, yes, we I mean, are. I think that's it's encouraging, and I don't know if it's <laughs> just where I live. It's just you know, New York City is more like people are more. It's more stressful guess, level. It'll be more so open. stressed. Well, yeah, New, um, yeah. Well, New York is more so, so a stressful, ta- a stressful city, a stressful place to be anyway. Um, yeah, no, you know no, the definitely. hustle, bustle, the nonstop. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey everyone, this is Reggie from Pro Rants. And if you haven't heard about Anchor by now, where have you been? No, seriously. It is the easiest way to make a podcast. And let me explain why. 
It's free. I mean, completely free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more platforms. You can start making money from your podcast with no minimum listenership, which is great. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Since we're speaking on men, this is this is one of the topics we wanted to cover today. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we wanted to, it, it's good coming from women anyway. Yeah, <sighs> Pooja, why good. why do men cheat? Is it why would you say men cheat? Yeah, is it well, biological? So ask, is it is yeah. it men, you know is it mental? Is it just animal instincts that people say? Oh, we're just born. We're we're, we're just creatures by nature that we have to sit and, and reproduce. Spread our spread our seeds exactly (laughs) let them hatch Uh, let them let them grow yeah right but if that's the case right you know you you wouldn't be seeing men buying condoms um, yeah (laughs) right so yeah Yeah. i don't know why i I don't know why that was more so like offensive than (laughs) than her cursing right oh my god i was like did she just say that the c word i did that was so crazy right (laughs) yo that threw me off courage okay by the way the use of that is you are going to do that um so oh so we do so we do have we do have uh we do sorry we do have warning disclosure sorry so Pooja <laughs> says she prescribes to you using the rubber guys what, what, what always that? pack oh, yeah, the, okay. always pack the rubber always roll with the rubble even I when you it. cheat <laughs> and back to our regular schedule program As i'm sorry Pooja, what are you saying Especially if you're going to be cheating, you better because you're putting your primary partner at risk. Right? Exactly, that about, is true. Not yes. the side chick, um, the primary. Exactly. Yes. Cool. Um, so, well, let me ask you guys before I get into sort of my thoughts. Um, mm-hmm. And you don't have to obviously just close details or things. You can just sort of, you know, kind of just say you or your friend circle generally. Okay. Have you guys had these discussions where it, it's come up, or people are like, "Yeah, yeah I'm thinking about it," or like it's happened or the culture maybe you know the culture mm-hmm. that i've seen that i've heard mm-hmm. like the culture just being around i don't know if it's because of of you know it being the rap culture that it seems like it's something that's talked about like uh, uh, so let's yeah. say I, I i'm at the gym i, I that's what ray and I, ray and i met at la fitness um mm-hmm. getting some buckets um <laughs> and the the culture the general culture is just it seems like it's it's, it's no longer taboo it's like it's okay so they talk about mm-hmm. it like oh dude i got this this and i have this this chick and that's chick and yeah. so it's not even talked about with discretion anymore right amongst the, it's, more, right. it's right. more so like a pride like a, a rite of passage it seems right mm-hmm. you know what i mean so yeah. so yeah. on your on your question you asked like in the, in our circles or whatnot mm-hmm. has that happened before yes i can okay. i can tell you yes and and uh, friends that I have that 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 has happened where they've yeah. talked about that and you know it's uh yeah. at our age it's still it's still a little shocking that they're still doing that but mm-hmm. you know it's uh it still happens you know yeah yeah it, you know and the thing is it is much more common not just men women too although more men um there's there's a higher percentage of men that actually will go you know that'll have like um you know extramarital affairs or uh sex outside of a monogamous relationship than women but it does it is much more common than i think people um talk about or accept but i think what you hit on is such a such an important thing like the rap culture i mean look we have songs that go different codes and different area codes i, yeah. I forgot who right? yeah, that was like ludicrous that. luda ludicrous <laughs> Yes, I mean, the, the, the famous right uh, philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like, there's so many songs. Shop, or yeah. like, there's just every, I can't even, I can't, I mean, there's too many. That's yeah. the problem. And it gets into subliminal. I think, you know, I've, everything yeah. plays in your subliminal that you think it's okay and you think it's, uh, you, you know, it's manly. Or yeah, it's, or not, exactly. Right? Yeah. I was, um, I was thinking about, right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, you first. You first. No, right. Dang, right, real, right. <laughs> Yo, I ain't know if he's going to beat you. Don't be perjured. Yo, I'm glad you're not here, perjured, because this dude is about to whip you. Nah, go ahead. Go ahead and do that thing. 
Yo, he gave me a look. Damn, I'm, I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> My voice got high. I'm gonna be quiet, Ram, over here. No, I was thinking about a, a, a Jay Z song for some reason. The one called uh, "Song Cry Song" or a "Song Cry," where he talks about. You know, yeah, about um, different women, right? Like, with, uh, gosh, girls, them are girls. We girls. don't girls. No. girls. We talking about? I'm talking about a song cry where he talked about he's with this girl and they were doing really good, but he was out there doing this dirt, and then she got fed up with him, and then he was like, "I was gonna, I was just messing with, the, I was just messing with those girls. I was gonna get right back." So he's basically telling her that, "Yeah, I was cheating on you, but I was taking care of you. But it's okay because mm. I'm taking care of you, so um, you shouldn't leave me like that because." Right. Because at the end of the day, you still have your business at yeah. home. Yeah, still take care of things. I'm a man. Like of in pride. my home, I'm giving you, food, I'm giving you care, right? Like, right. I'm giving you what you want. Yes, exactly. It's, it, it, it should be okay. Do you think it's more right. so a midlife crisis that? Okay, so let's let's, let's say for instance, I, I'm a, I, I'm a man, obviously, and um, <laughs> you, <laughs> I, yeah, thank you, and I. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to be canceled. Uh, oh <laughs> so basically, so I'm a man. I have two teenage daughters and, I, you know, mm-hmm. my wife and everything. So is it a midlife crisis as far as not being, especially if you have a house where you're the manly man that does everything. Mm-hmm. You, you, you you do it, the, do, the DIY projects, you know, the projects mm-hmm. you do, um, everything needs to be fixed, anything, or this needs mm-hmm. to be, oh, if you, you know, they're not tall enough, so you need to grab something from the cupboard and whatnot mm-hmm. in you. So more so now that you're, they're more so independent, you're, you're not, they're no longer dependent on you that you feel lost, that you lost your place. And therefore you may seek it outside because that sense of not being wanted or needed. Um, mm-hmm. is, it, is it a reason? La- you mean like lack of appreciation? Lack of, no, just a lack of not appreciation. Like, I think what's it, my role now? Yeah. What's your role? Change. Like you're like, it's almost like you're a, a a vet, uh, and you're, you're deployed, and you come back, and you no longer know your place in the household, uh, and you're like, oh, well, where am I now? Because no one needs you as they used to. So it's like, oh shoot, I'm just here, and so kind of like right, like ne- neglect a little bit. Like you're not, you're there, but you're not like that attention that you were getting before. Maybe exactly. That, like oh, I need you, daddy. I want you for this, or I need that. Yeah, it's more so. Good. Oh, I got it. Uh, get out of my room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get out of my room. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, you let yeah, me know when you start paying that rent, girl. You pay that rent for that room. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's. So, do you think it's more? Uh, I think it's a combination, probably, of things. Obviously, yeah, there's a few things. I mean, there's so much research out there, and I was actually just um, mm-hmm. looking through some research, and um, the, you know, there, there's, there's a couple of theories. Um, you know, of course, there's always like a hypothesis, but um, you know, because you're looking at a different, you have to look at the validity of the study. Like, how many people did they look at? Because if it's just 50 people that you, you can't really use, that can't represent the majority. Um, but, yeah. you know, like it, it, there was an article that, that was published in the Journal of Sex Research uh, recently that I came across, which, um, you know, surveyed like 562 adults. And there's like some strict like questionnaires. And out of out of those, they actually identified eight common reasons uh, why people cheat. Ooh, what's the eight reasons? And, so, yeah, yeah, but let's make so, sure it's just the men. Let's make sure it's just the men. I mean, for the men, okay. Because yes, so, we're going to do the women in the next segment. I mean, not this yeah. segment, but next next time sure. we speak to you. So I'll save then I'll save that. But um, mm-hmm. what they found, and I'm not surprised actually, because even for my practice, I've seen this often, um, is that for men. Um, you know, they found that men were more likely to report being like, motivated to cheat by sexual desire, which is like they're feeling unsatisfied with the sex life and their relationship or just wanting something new, like wanting to try, wanting to have this like this sexual need or the secret or do this you, need to have something more. Do um, you think the sex, okay, but do you think that plays yeah. into not some, wanting something new? Do you think it's, I think it's masked by something that has to do again with the role, like as far as maybe your your wife or your partner doesn't see you as attractive anymore. So you take them wanting to be, let's say, uh, you know, experimental. They wanted to be experimental before, and they desired you. So to now they're not looking at you that way. That they're too busy now. That they oh, I have to do the laundry. Yeah. I have to do this. So they're they're more so taking it as not being wanted. I think it still falls in in place of not being wanted versus mm-hmm. trying something new and being bored well, i think, um, I, I think. Dep- no 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 that, that, i mean that plays into it i mean a lot of men you know 
that the men tend to, so that doesn't mean that the other stuff that maybe the reasons why women cheat doesn't apply to men either, but yeah. differences in, in their, um, the, the percentages that they found was yeah. that men were more motivated uh, because either for sexual desire, for variety, or situational things. So situational being like, um, you know, you're somewhere, you're drunk, or you're traveling a lot for business. Oh, you have that opportunity where you're under so. a lot of gotcha. stress, you yeah. know. Because you think about it, like, a lot of, um, even in this day, right, after women have kids, uh, their bodies change, right? Their, their, their priorities do change. Yeah. Husbands often may feel a little neglected, like, okay, now it's all about the kids, or things get mundane and boring. So a lot of men will seek it out. It's not that they're not happy at home. Surprisingly, men usually do it because... They just either want like a different outlet to get away from that like day to day routine because they find it a little bit more invigorating, exciting. Yeah. Uh, um, also, they're the ones that are more out and about. More men are still in the market working, so they're coming across more women in different situations. Wow. Um, there's opportunity, but now, now you put all that together. Now, let's say somebody has um, ADHD, right? Now. People with adult, especially if it's been missed, because it, it, ADHD also is a very sort of um, a misunderstood, I think, label for it could be present and diagnosed in adulthood. Uh, it looks very different. There's traits that are different. It's not about are you constantly moving, um, running around. It could be the guy that's looking out the window. You're distracted. Uh, you are, you know, maybe the one tapping your foot more, leaving the room during meetings. So you, you've learned to the, contain the the symptoms. You're, you're able to, you know, find a way to compensate and get through. Maybe you've made it through college. They're like, well, you don't seem to have any attentional issues. But but at the end of the day, one of the core things in ADHD is that you need variety and you get bored. So sometimes it's just that the partner, if there's that underlying issue, um, that can cause sort of that need for, I need to experiment, you know, that risk-taking game is sort of there. I want that adrenaline from something that I'm not supposed to do because um, it's taboo. Wow. Or, and that's what I've seen here. A lot of, um, you know, somebody that I was recently a patient, uh, of course. And, you know, for the guys that are listening, I don't need to think that therapists go around talking about, um, about like personal information. No, they absolutely um, so, do at Christmas parties, guys. Let me just tell oh, you. Okay. There you go. No, I'm kidding. Well, I would stop. Yeah. I would stop going to that therapist. Um, right. Um, or leave before they get their third. Party. I'm just speaking for a friend. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, God. You were saying yes. Yeah, so obviously, you yeah. keep everything confidential. We, we, yes. Yeah. I mean, there's limits to the yeah. confidentiality, right? Yeah. Like, you're going to tell me you're going to hurt yourself and you have an active plan, and or, or you're going to hurt somebody else. I do have to report that. Um, again, it's always for safety. But things like this, you know, it, it's at least I do. I don't look at it as I don't look at you and go, oh, my God, you're a nasty, evil person for doing this to your spouse. I see that behavior different mm -hmm. from you. Like the person that you are is not your behavior is not you. Right. So one thing we all have to have is some self-compassion because there's so many reasons. I mean, a lot of people are stuck in these relationships, maybe for, for, for a lot of reasons for, they don't want to be. Yeah, you know? for kids or for money yeah. or just uh, yeah. the situations um, where it's, you know, about situations right. they can't get out of at the time. So, right. so okay, so as far as on your list, uh, mm -hmm. as far as the, the eight that you have, I don't know how many is actually um, uh, designed or, or uh, tailored more so to men. How many mm -hmm. have we knocked down? The list you have. We have not done, I would say, um, I would say about like four. Four? So uh, so the four are, what What are they again? ADHD. ADHD. ADHD um, and right. It's like there's stuff underlying. Stuff right. Forward. Like, um, I would actually even say like, you know, I think, I think Ray, you mentioned like just maybe not feeling wanted or not need, being needed, not knowing what to do. Sometimes that affects, you know, when your role shifts, your self-esteem does get affected. Men don't like to talk about that or admit that, like, oh, you know, I'm feeling kind of like um, not needed here. So they seek it elsewhere. Because think about it. If you're a lot of the men that I've seen or in couples counseling, one mm -hmm. of the big things will come up is I'm all I feel emasculated. I'm always being told I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing that wrong. I'm doing this wrong. Wow. Yeah. Now they're, you know, maybe out for a work party. They get drunk. There's a colleague or somebody that's just being very nice and attentive and saying all the right things. And you know, maybe giving them the boost that they need or yeah, the things that they need to hear. Yeah, that's funny. I was going to have, that's, I had a question for that too. I mean, I was going to ask, that's actually one of my questions. I would say, is it a lack of confidence? And I think that's, uh, you, yeah. you just answered that. Yeah. 
uh, you're like compensated. I, I think people get into like uh, mundane, you know, relationships. Well, it's not mundane because you're living with someone, so you have routines. Gotcha. And you get in mm-hmm. doing the same thing over and over and over. And then, yep. you know, life happens. You have kids, you got bills, you got yeah. responsibilities, and then everything is the same. But usually yeah. there's always someone who's just like looking for more or mm-hmm. there's always one who's content. And there's sometimes there's mm-hmm. one who's not content. And there's one who's always trying to like move in a different direction. Well, there's, yeah. Okay. You know, move in a different direction. And sometimes uh, when someone is you feel like someone is being mundane and boring. You you're looking for just some kind of just spark somewhere, and then right. and then someone gives you a little bit of attention or a little bit of like pick you up. It, yeah, it mm-hmm. draw, it draws you like a magnet because it's like oh my gosh, I'm not getting this at home. I'm not getting a yeah. uh, I'm not getting an attaboy at home. I'm I'm just getting you know uh, someone that's basically keeping you in check, uh, keeping you keeping you grounded in or, a sense. Or you getting or you getting the list. Can you pick this up from Publix? Uh, can you can you can you, this? can you do this? Can you put you do the this? feet down for the yeah. 50th time. You know, or yeah, yeah or so just, a lack of appreciation. Yeah, it, but that it, could you. It, that it could be. be it could be a combination though. Well, yeah. But what you guys are mentioning though, all of those things, yeah. the underlying sen- like the underlying sentiment, the feeling, yeah. really is resentment builds up, right? Yeah. You see that person, you're resentful. Mm. Do you think you it's resentful. Do you think it's another way of Okay. In other words, is it because you say masculated and and um, and uh, treated a certain way? Do you think it's a way of them having some type of control in their life that hey, I can control this part of it since everything else is is already set for me. This person conducts everything I do and dictates what I do throughout the day or mm-hmm. at home. This is the only control I have. So, mm-hmm. so you're going to act out? Is that, is that what you're trying to say? Well, not act out. I'm saying maybe it's it's a mental thing like, oh, this is I have control over this. That's your escape, right? That's yeah. your way of like compensating for, okay, well, if I have this, then I can blow off my steam this way, and then I don't feel so guilty when I'm resentful. Or it, it, at least that's sense. what I've heard. So before. instead of having Netflix, you got a girl on the side. Well, no, no, I'm saying maybe, I'm saying maybe, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying maybe they, they, it's, no, no, but what I'm trying to say is like, it's more so a pride thing. Like, okay, I don't have... Like, okay, I don't have any say in the household, so let me have mm-hmm. a say on what I actually do for – it's an, an empowerment. I, I, I can't explain. Maybe I can't explain why it's an empowerment, but it's like, okay, I can make this decision, and no one can tell me no. that. No one yeah. can tell you no. No one can tell me no because at the end of the day, this is me. everything is acted for me, so this is the only outlet that I have that I can control. Can't pick up another sport because – Hey, I need to be home with the kids. Can't can't do this because right. I need you know because uh, we got to go to your yeah. parents' house. Can't do this because uh, we, we you can't go to my parents' house. You get you know it's almost like right. everything is dead. And this only, yes, and this up. and this <laughs> is the only thing you have that empowers you that makes you not lose your mind. Maybe that's one of the main reasons they could it's like be an doing escape, that. right? Like a fantasy of world. Where, and, but the, the interesting thing is, a yeah. lot of men that that do either have these you know fantasies or have actually acted on them or you know um have you know actually gone on to have extramarital affairs for a lot of them it's like well i just want to feel that you know feeling of meeting someone new again or i just you know needed to see what was there but it's not that i'm unhappy at home like i'm very happy i'm not going to leave my spouse but I just want that extra something on the side, you know, and it's just so kind they of want maybe more, 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 <laughs> more. And, and, and the, the, the important thing here too is to, and then there's some men who, you know, um, if you're feeling like maybe, you know, the, the whole, this is something I think that um, if, if the culture is all about like, you know, men should be out there like having as many women as they can married or not because you know what we're controlling the economy we're, i mean like i don't know if you guys ever saw uh, mad men the that yes whole, um, and the husband yeah yeah I remember yes that. so you have like that you know whole mentality from that time where it's just always been men are like the hunters women are the gatherers mm-hmm. and so when you're hunting you're entitled to for bringing home the bounty you're entitled to sort of like um you're putting your life at risk literally at that those times and so it was like more acceptable to have multiple people so that you could grow the human uh, population Mm -hmm. um but also you know sometimes it's just like i need to have this little secret or i just want more or their spouse is sick or unable to provide that side of what they need sexually or they're 
um, not open to some things that may be seen as deviant behavior sexually. And so they like oh. to seek out people that would engage in that, right? Like oh. their spouse or partner is not on board with trying something that they really want to try, then this is how they might be able to meet that need. But that doesn't mean that they yeah. want to leave the relationship because that just, just means they want an exposition expedition partner. <laughs> like I want somebody that can do splits. I want somebody that can do splits and, and swing and swing uh, and do stuff on the pole. Okay. I, no, I, I <laughs> that's it. And all this plays into, uh, you know, pornos and stuff like that. So, but okay. social media obviously makes, I, I, I would love to see the statistics as far as from okay. what happened, um, from when social media took off these apps and everything as far as infidelity and how it skyrocketed because it has to be astronomical. It has to be so ridiculous because it's, it's in the palm of their hand. It's not like yeah. they, they don't have to necessarily uh, bump into to, to Susie that they went to school with. Susie can right. just ring them up and, oh, and poke them. Or, wasn't, or, there right. a, wasn't there an app called or a site called, uh, oh, or the, it, the, it was a site for cheating? Um, um, I know Ashley the, Madis was it the one that had a hack. I know there's yeah, it got hacked. Is that was is that what it's Ashley Madison? A- was Ashley it? Madison. Oh, really? It got hacked. Yeah, it was where a like long time ago. It, it was encouraged to like this is where you come to cheat on oh, your wow. spouse, and I think someone hacked it as as Pooja just said, and um, they yeah. leaked all the names. I can, there's some like in, like influential people on there. It's not there's a whole they, I, this is years ago. I remember <laughs> that's crazy. That on the news. I could have sworn it had like a. <laughs> Hey, I had I could have sworn it was like a Supergirl episode of that. <laughs> had that on, man. Okay, well, like oh, season one. It was like season one. Oh yeah, I'm over here like you for real because that was like in Supergirl. Okay, no, that's that happened. <laughs> I, I remember that. It was and like, whatever, dudes. I watch. Okay, I watched Supergirl the first season. Okay, Melissa Benoist <laughs> is hot. Damn it. Gosh damn it, um, she's a great actress too. Gosh damn it, those haters right now. Are you? Oh, no. If you watch Superman, you, it's pretty suspect. <laughs> You're watching a dude in I, tights. No. I don't think I've seen, oh jeez, but I don't. I don't think I've seen that one. But I mean, you know, there's also that, and then there's the whole like this thing about like, oh, I could do um, more. Or someone's not gonna know, but also like maybe they just feel like I can. Yeah, like you said, right? Like they're if they're drunk, it's gonna lower lower your inhibitions. So now if you have control. Uh, issues with yourself like your your impulse control is low as it is if you you know let's say for someone who may have adhd or they're depressed where their judgment isn't right gotcha. now you're drinking doing drugs on top of that yeah. now you have like somebody else there it just might happen right like it, it could um so that that's something that's very common um, as listed for, for for men is that they're traveling for business often then you have opportunity a space yeah. um there's all these sites now I, like you could be at a bar and just I can, like i, I can tell you, you i can tell you personally when i was in the navy i yeah. had a girlfriend mm-hmm. that i cheated on and it was because mm-hmm. of lack of uh, maturity you, you uh, had a girlfriend that you cheated on yeah oh yeah. because she was immature you were mature i was immature i didn't <laughs> i didn't yeah not because she's immature i mean i just had that, you i just wanted you to admit that yes how yeah. old were you <laughs> How old were you then? Uh, 21, 22. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. You I was. Yeah, kind of wanted to maybe just experiment too. Maybe too 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 much commitment too soon. At least that's what I've seen in the early 20-somethings that yeah. I often come across. Yeah. I think you're super young. That you should more so be exploring. Yeah. Could be until you figure out what you know. And, and, and for a lot of people, it's mm-hmm. that. Or as they get older and now, all of a sudden, they're different, like, um, they have a shift in what they want or a lot of men are like, you know, well, like now she's the mother of my kids. I can't really have her do certain things because she's going to kiss my kids with that mouth. Oh. Or, or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, that, so it's seen as a sign of respect so, that you're not asking your spouse to do that. Funny. But at yeah. the same time, what's more disrespectful, right? Like you're going to, yeah. so instead of communicating what you need, are you just going to like go go so to what, somebody else and uh, put them at risk? <laughs> what should you, okay, so let's say what advice would you give a guy right now listening uh, if they're having impulses of doing this or if they are, uh, what would you say? Would you tell them, Hey, you should communicate to your wife that you're having these, these uh, impulses, no. these she, nudges. Of she said, she said to get a it. condom. Remember? Oh my God. <laughs> I said, Yo, if you're going to do it, then you should because Yo. that would be a responsible thing to do. Yo. Um, um, Cause you don't want to be taking herpes home or AIDS home or HIV to exactly. your yeah, house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I just, I just want to say something real quick. Yeah. Cara, that you can was drop all knowledge. Ray. Cara, that was all Ray. I had nothing to do with that. Um, apparently, Ray says he's gonna rub her up. 
<laughs> oh boy! Oh my goodness! No, that's cool though. But uh, it's cool, Ray, that you said that. But <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, we got the wh- takeaway from this. <laughs> no, I mean, I, <laughs> hey, we found away. something. I learned something about Ray. I didn't know. So now I know. I know what kind of brother sitting across the table from you. Now. I'm just kidding. Oh, completely kidding. But uh, what would you tell them to do? In other words, what would you? What advice yeah. would you give them? Right. Well, so I would. I would say, like you know, kind of look inward and try to understand like what's motivating. You know. This, this impulse, like what is going on right now? Is it more most of the time when there's something like this that comes up, it really has to do with you. It's not your partner. It's uh, there's something that either you're lacking, you're missing, you're not feeling good about something. Could be that you're going through um, a lot of transitions, not feeling you know appreciated or heard or wanted, yeah. you're not getting certain needs met. So or, or, or you're just feeling bored. I mean, right now with COVID, I think people are so bored. They're just like we're sitting at home all day long before yeah. it was like you could go to your office and then you came home and you had your kid time and you had, you know, yeah. now it's like you're doing it all 24 seven is what it feels like. So yeah. I would just say, sit down, dedicate some time with your spouse or your significant other, or your girlfriend, just let them know or, or boyfriend, you know, yeah. um, let them know. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, right. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That too. <laughs> yeah. Sit down weekly, connect with each other. Just, just maybe, you know, sit down and say, is there anything from last week that we need to talk about? Is there something I could do differently? And what else can I do to love you better or to show you that I care? And that also gives you an opportunity to tell them what you need. Oh, um, okay. Right. And I do encourage, I mean, if somebody is like, I'm feeling like I just, I need more, I need this. And I'm like, well, you need to but first kind of understand where it's coming from. And oftentimes there's a lot of either uh, sexual abuse or trauma in the past. So Mm. some of this reckless behavior can stem from that if there's a trigger, Um, you know, it's a way just if they're depersonalizing, dissociating as in like they're not feeling like themselves and there's a trigger to their trauma. uh, Sometimes uh, promiscuity can be a sign. Sometimes people with bipolar disorder uh, where they're very manic, they can, you know, there's some people shop a lot. You might see some people start to get promiscuous. Um, it's sort of. What are you saying that depends. shopping? You, wait, are you saying? Wait, are you, are you associating well, shopping holics to that? <laughs> No, I'm just, no, I well, was, isn't, no, no, I, that's a good question. Um, yeah. but you know, bipolar two, there's different types. Bipolar one, sorry, it's, it's like wow. there's one and two. Okay. Two is where you have less. The manic states aren't like you don't get on top of a roof and think you're going to fly, but like yeah. bipolar one can be very serious. You could, you are just like really high all of a sudden on life. And you're just like, I can take over the world. You, uh, a lot of promiscuity is seen when people have bipolar disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a lot of people then just shop. They'll just do something access everything. That's an access because of so much energy. They operate on like three hours of sleep, but you, but, you know, and their wow. speech is really rapid. Yeah. So oftentimes there's all these underlying issues going on too. And so if you're not compliant, if you need to be on your medication, yeah. well, check that. Are you taking your meds properly? Are you seeking the right channels and be open with your spouse? Let them know that you're struggling and what that struggle is doing to you. Maybe phrase it as I, as opposed to you're not giving me attention. It's easier to, you know, to do when you do that, you're putting that other person at fault and saying, and you're the reason that I'm feeling this. Whereas I need more attention. How can, you know, I don't know, but I would like to have more alone time with you. How can we do that? Mm -hmm. What can work? Um, I'm feeling like a little left out. Like I want to be more a part of this family. What can we change? Uh, yeah. How do you feel about this relationship? Because I guarantee you, guys, if you're feeling certain things, like don't don't think that your your wife, your girlfriend, uh, is not feeling those things either. I mean, exactly. there's other yeah. things. Mm-hmm. So goes both ways make sure you keep it open because they sense women sense when something's off so instead you just might be shy to say like i'm feeling inadequate in bed or i'm not able to like you know a lot of men feel like if i can't please my girl then i'm not a man and that's Mm -hmm. not you know always it's not always true it happens um but so then they'll go seek it elsewhere to maybe see okay what am i doing what could i do what am I doing wrong? Can I, yeah, right. I or like, or like, am I able to, am I, am I just like done being able to be that, like, you know, that guy in bed? Am I, am I done? Like, is that part of my life done? Um, so then they need to explore and see like, if that's still something that they're doing or able to, to do by pleasing other women. It makes, so it's a boost again, self-esteem. So talk to your spouse and let them know, like, Hey, I'm starting to feel this way. Do weekly check-ins. I always say those three questions. Just check in. Like, how are you feeling there? Like if you, let things go and you yeah. get resentful. Then yeah. you're going to stop communicating. And then you're going to look for that, that escape. That is just not healthy. Then you're, gonna, you're getting on um, 
sites that just aren't good for you. A lot of times there's issues with in-laws that come up uh, big time. That can play a big role. So just be open. Be on the same team. Like don't let the your spouse, your girlfriend feel like they're the they're the other. And let them know if you feel like you're the other. Like, well, you're not part of the same team because that's when you start to grow apart. And you want to nip that in the bud. So just sit down and have a long time, 30 minutes, like once a week, have a glass of wine, whatever, scotch, whatever you like. Um, I, I prefer scotch, but <laughs> um, <laughs> um, meat, meat. But um, <laughs> so, you know, just talk and, and just like enjoy yourselves and talk about things that are hard, but then also like build rituals about how can I reconnect? Like, what can we do each week? That's just something we do and gotcha. do that. So I challenge you guys that are either listening here or um, for, for Reggie and, and Ray, you guys like think about like be in the moment, look around. If you're starting to feel things um, that are coming up, you're noticing certain like, okay, I wish this was kind of different. You're getting that resentment sort of, you know, feel, try to put yourself in, in the other shoes and understand maybe look at it from that perspective. Like, em- do you empathy. think that, you know, empathy. Do you think your spouse wants to be taking care of the kids, waking up, doing 1500 things and like laundry instead of maybe having sex with you? I guarantee you they don't. But like you got an adult at some point, things do change. And part of accepting that change is also important that it's not going to be, you know, the way it was when you guys were in your 20s. Yeah, definitely. Spontaneity is not going to be the key anymore. Everything's got to be put everything in order. You got to have a schedule and it's nothing wrong. I mean, it takes maybe the spice out of it, but at the end of the day, at least things get done. If if it's, it's, but but you can add the spice, add some role play. You can do, right? You got to pencil it in. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. You can make it work. Yeah. You definitely uh, want to. Definitely could. Yes. I mean, so, I mean, that's some great tips, guys. You heard she says communication above all is the key to to nipping it in the bud, communicating, assessing the relationship, assessing your feelings with your, your spouse, but not just making it about you coming across where you're making the communication about them and what they need, because that entails mm-hmm. turns in what you need. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and well said. Relationship. Thank you. And, yeah, and yeah. also listen. <laughs> like you can communicate, but you have to listen to what they're saying because there are many times that I listen and but I'm not listening. You hear? Yeah, really. You're hearing, but you're not listening. <laughs> right. You hear yeah. it, but you're not really listening. And not only that, you want to actively listen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like there we go, go. Right. You want to make eye contact, listen, nod, and go. Yeah. Like that. Validate their feelings too. Like yeah, I'm, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. That's hard. Or like nod or say like, so I'm hearing that you're saying this, like, I get that, you know, yeah. like that happened to me the other day. I understand. Give them your attention, put your phone away for like 20 minutes mm-hmm. if you need to, you know, yeah. stop multitasking. Um, because yeah, I mean, guys, that's, I'm that's telling a, you, if you're feeling these things. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You're not alone. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and, um, and definitely in the society we're living now, what multitasking and the f- smartphone is part of the relationship, uh, whether it's, it's in a dynamic, it's in the household now. I mean, even with your kids and stuff, I mean, there's everyone's got yeah. a phone at the table and no one's communicating. So uh, that's why I definitely, like <laughs> yes. I told you, I definitely want to cover that, that social uh, dilemma with you uh, on that Netflix. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that, that is absolutely. Yeah, that's just uh, riveting all the information. That's out mm-hmm. there. Like technology is a beautiful thing. And then it could also turn like rise of the machines um, in Terminator yeah. because it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's um, definitely. But oh, the other thing for I forget, I also mm-hmm. wanted to sort of mention is that when, you know, for guys, especially at a certain age, like once you start to feel a little bit more like you're just like depressed, you're going through your, your bouts. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of guys say, you know, I'm just feeling this sadness or this some type of way or this like this this cloud and then i'm okay well i'm just not as energetic yeah at some point you might want to also check like go to doctor get your um testosterone levels checked because when those go low yeah. you can feel these like you know the, the, you're just tired or you're not as able so then you feel like i'm not able to be the man that i used to be so you're going to mm. try to be the man but now you have a medical issue that could be corrected with medication easily um, like vitamin D might be lacking. I mean, there's just so many things that you could, you need to look into because it could have another root. Um, and then you might just feel better and you might not, you know, feel like I need to figure out and get that sense of like my manhood back because it's, it's there. It's just natural. Some of this is just accepting transitions in life and being open to it and going with what's there. Um, yeah, that ties it's not, in. you know, it's hard to do. That ties, that ties into what Reggie was saying in the beginning, as far as go to the yeah. doctor. 
get checked yes. out. Yeah, definitely. Yes. yes. Don't yes. be don't be afraid. Yes, man. Don't be a wimp. Go go see a doctor. Go talk to a don't doctor. Go talk to a, either doctor, <laughs> anyone that's Any physical or or, or 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 a mentalist. Uh, anyone. You know, someone like and, and print those out. The page from nine JD seven. Fill it out. Let the doctor look at it and score it for you. And what is if that form? You, what is that form again? Um, what is that form again? Yeah, Say it's it again. called the um, patient health questionnaire. Uh, there's one that's like the full, um, but the ones that are commonly used during physicals by doctors would be the PHQ nine pa- uh, patient health questionnaire nine. It, it's about like I think like nine questions that go around that surround depression or mood disorder, mm-hmm. and then there's one called the GAD GAD seven for anxiety generalized anxiety, um, and then it like kind of checks just in your perspective how difficult do these symptoms make your day to day life functioning. Uh, so it gives them a good idea, and they then they can look at the biological side and rule things out, you know. And again, if don't be shy if you're having trouble, like sometimes in the bedroom, you know, with um, erection, or if you're like not able to keep yeah. it, like it's okay, mention it because there could be another underlying issue there, mm. or it could be anxiety, and that's okay. And then that's something that you then can actively address. Once you label it, you can actively address, right? But if yeah. you keep denying it, then you're just going to start to feel more resentful and distant of your partner as opposed to what is going on. I need to figure this out. So, um, Keep that in mind too. These are all important things to talk about, and you so, know. Do you so as far as where do people reach out to you uh, mm-hmm. in New York? Uh, you know, a, a website where would they reach out to you to? I yeah, mean, so I do have a website up. I actually recently just uh, um, so it, it's it's um, www dot puja t therapy dot com. Um, it's now, re- now it's been renamed as pivotal psychotherapy practices as mm. I'm growing into okay. a group practice. So, um, gotcha. it'll, but if you go to that site, it'll redirect you once I eventually, um, update everything, but it will redirect you to my site. So I'm happy to provide that info and, uh, you know, uh, I know that there's a couple of other topics to, to go through, but I also do more intuitive, like healing work, um, intuitive spiritual coaching in addition to psychotherapy. So I incorporate it. Do you do telehealth at all? Like uh, I do right now. It yeah, is so, just so telehealth um, yeah. period because of COVID. So yeah. it's just not um, a good idea, right? Like to, it's just so accessible now to do it online. Yep. So I prefer the in person because you know the energy, the, the level. Like there are patients that I think that if I had started with the difficulties that they had online, I don't think we would have made the progress, but. I think that there are also some people that are just now used to this and they prefer it because they don't have to go anywhere, spend time coming back. It's discreet. They just need to find a safe space in your house to talk about it. Go for a walk if you need to. Um, you know, things are a little lax right now. So you, you can do phone sessions. You don't necessarily have to be on um, a video unless you're, um, I, I request video when possible because I'd like to get a look at the person, make sure they're okay. Yeah. I look for, you know, body language cues as well because you could be telling me i'm great but your body language is telling me otherwise so it's something to for me as a practitioner important but many will do phone calls many will do texts i don't necessarily like those apps that you know that they'll like will text you back but um there is options it's better than nothing there's lots of different ways to get mental health care their funds um to help cover bills if you can't afford it there is one that just recently i heard about um Something about rest in peace, like mental health. I, I'll have to get that Ooh, website pretty, for you. But they have, pretty yeah, morbid. pretty morbid. I don't know if I want to check <laughs> but, that. Rest in rest peace, rest guys. In don't peace. check that out. <laughs> no, but it's rest in peace, mental health debt, or health debt, or medical bills debt, or something. Whoever, so the, mar- just... whoever the marketers for that <laughs> needs to be shot. Ooh. I mean, I may just have butchered the name. That could just yeah, be on me. I guess. <laughs> Rest in peace but, is but, not, not. <laughs> but they're saying it to the to the debt. So if money gotcha. is an issue, right? Oh, so they're rest saying of, okay. that there's right. Yeah. So they 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 um, work through donations and they raise funds to help people um, pay off medical health costs uh, that are you know that they're unable to to take care of, so that they can get access to medical care without having to burden the cost of therapy or Ooh, okay. you know any of that. So there are resources. Sometimes your in-network insurance providers may be able to waive the copays. Um, or, or, or co-insurance or whatever it is for, um, you know, medical reasons. Like right now, I do know that like United, um, I, I believe anything under Optum, which is their mental health plan, 
Um, so if you have like Oxford, any of those are waiving cost sharing. So they're taking care of the whole pay. Um, two, they're in network providers only though. So that's something to also, you know, or Aetna, I think. So, um, right now there are, there are different resources available. If money is an object, there are online ways to, to access it now. There's tons of online sites that you can match with a therapist that maybe, you know, you feel comfortable with. I would encourage you to talk to a few people, see how comfortable you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like if you want that person who's just going to talk less and listen and nod and kind of just, you know, let you ventilate if that's what you mean, but, but be there with you and give you that space. That's great. If you want someone who's more interactive, then look for that. You know, it's all about that. You need to build that rapport. Whoever you go to, if you're not feeling comfortable, if you can't build that therapeutic uh, rapport, as, as we call it, or the alliance, which data has shown is the single most predictor of um, success in therapy is it that is. connection with I, your therapist. I agree. I agree. I had a therapist so, at one time and good. I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't go back because of our rapport. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't blame happens. you. I mean, hey, I had a, I mean, it's not a therapist, but, therapist, but I had an esthetician that's, you know, bad rapport. Mm-hmm. <laughs> bad rapport, <laughs> dude. I mean, hey, your skin. Hey, I'm, hey, <laughs> if you're a man that takes care of, you know, you care about your looks or whatnot, you, you, how you look and you got a, you know, you got like a couple pimples or acne, hey, and your rapport is different with the, with the, uh, esthetician. Or the uh-huh. dermatologist, hey, are we talking if about he doesn't feel good, hey, it's all fa- mental. Face, facial stuff? Yeah, no, the facial, the, no, I'm saying. We're talking about like a mental health therapist, right? No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. Uh, listen, I'm just saying, you no, got to have a rapport with, provider. Yeah. exactly, because it matters. That could, <laughs> that could be, meant to say. exactly, that could be, that could be the difference between you having cavities if you go to a dentist and not. Because if you don't have a good rapport, you're not going to go back to the dentist. If that, you don't, that's true. See what I'm saying? True. So in any medical field, I think you should have some type of rapport and feel good where, about who where's, you're seeing. Where's that button at for the uh, dum dum dum? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I can't find it. Let me see. Oh, here it is. <laughs> oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you all but, felt you know, that way for the encouragement. Seeing, thank you. But you're seeing your therapist probably at least once a week. So that, you know, is different than like seeing a, your physician once a year, once every six months. Mm-hmm. So no, that you got to feel comfortable. Um, it happens over time. And that is in the psychotherapeutic world. Like that is the number one thing. Like if you can't connect with your therapist, like you don't have that bond, then therapy, even though that person may be very skilled at what they do, if you just don't have that connection with them, you're not going to benefit from it. So it's super important to just know that whoever you choose um, meets certain criteria as a Joe with you, you know, ask a non-judgmental person that can listen. Do therapists, um, uh, mm-hmm. like I know, do they, do they give you like a, a free audit or something? I know, you know, is it like that? Like you can have a, console? a free audit? Yeah, yeah, some, console, some do, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I used to do like, like, like you know, until I, I got to a point where I just really had no no time in my day because it was back to back. But um, yeah, sometimes like somebody, you know, We'll offer you um, like 15 to 20 minute consoles just to talk to you and see if it's a good fit. Yeah. Although my recommendation is that sometimes it could just be a sales pitch. Go in, go in and do your initial session. If it's going to come out of like insurance, you, you don't, you know, yeah. it, it then, then unless you're paying out of pocket, I can understand that you want to do that. But either way, like just go in because you're not going to know what their style and process is until you actually sit through a session and get that idea. Um, because if you are unwilling to like, if it's something you're trying for the first time, you will find a way to talk yourself out of it. Like, well, they didn't sound that great on the phone or maybe they're nervous, you know, but if you go into their office, their space, you might feel different in their energy. You might feel good about like being there and you've taken that step. You're not finding reasons not to go because, oh, well, they sounded odd. I don't think they understood me. I don't think they, you know, you'll find reasons if you don't want to do it. So when you overthink it, then you're probably going to talk yourself out of going. But mm-hmm. I would say pick like no more than two to three that you're either going to want to talk to or just schedule initial sessions with. You don't have to stick with them. Yeah. Um, you know, try two or three different therapies if you need to, and then pick the best one that you sort of feel gets you and is able to help you and specializes in what you need help with. Because a lot of us don't realize it, but we've all had childhood trauma and it, it, follows us and the way we related to our parents the way our family dynamics were all of that follows us right so like yeah we need to be aware of the developmental trauma or complex ptsd it's not an actual diagnosis that's been recognized but it should be a lot of clinicians have um 
ask for that to get added because many people grew up with the witnessing domestic violence, you know, or potentially um, living in households where there's a lot of fighting, uncertainty, instability, alcoholism, mm, yeah. um, parents who are maybe narcissistic and all about them, then they carry those, star, uh, those scars with them. And that becomes a part of their personality, it shapes who they are, and it's something that's there. So it is also layers that you peel and you understand why you feel that way. So that's why I encourage you guys to take away from this is if you see a therapist, you're not crazy. You don't, you know, you're not, you're not problematic. You yeah. just need some support and someone to talk to that's going to listen and help you understand yourself better and just maybe give you some insights into understanding, oh, that makes sense. Like if I had this happen to me when I was, the, you know, nine years old, of course, I'm going to feel um, that, you know, if my parents like divorced after they had me, of course, I'm going to feel ambivalent about having a child because I may be worried my marriage is going to end after we have a kid. So there's always things that come up that we always aren't aware of, you know? So it's just, it's a space to go talk and listen and learn about yourself. That's really kind of it. Um, nothing wrong with that. It's like if you had um, diabetes or a thyroid problem, you'd have to take medicine for it. If you get cancer, you're going to go for chemo. So, well, if you have a, serotonin or dopamine issue which is your neurotransmitters in your brain you might need medication for that you're not going to function that's a chemical thing there so if you're going to be okay with taking it for your thyroid why not take it for your mental health that'll improve your overall life exactly um, exactly you know and you don't have to take it forever either there's there's protocols so um so, you know, hope, hope so that was helpful no that's definitely helpful so for a, a takeaway so the takeaway i would say What's the takeaway you give to people to do this week, as you were saying, for, for men yeah. to do the practice you were telling Ray and I? or So sit down with our spouse uh, once yeah. a week and try to once engage in conversation and see how they're feeling and, and, and go about that. So that's what the lesson should be yeah. this week for you gentlemen listening. Um, mm -hmm. to so I, mm -hmm. yeah, to take home, sit down, give yourselves like uninterrupted time, like, you know, just put away your phones, yep. 20, 30 minutes, talk to each other. Like how, like, how's your week? What, is there anything from last week that you want to talk to me about that, about us? How do you feel about us today? Um, is there anything you would like to see done differently? Is there anything I can do better to support you with, you know, things you're going through and, let them open up and it also gives you an opportunity to then share with them what you feel and keep it very like I feel I want for us, us, I, we, um, you want to stay away from the you. <laughs> gotcha. um, right. Right. Cause that's so right. easy to do that. Well, I want this and it can yeah, be interpreted yeah. differently or well, right. you, if you go, you, it, it's more, it's like you're putting the blame on them. So she's saying you're, gonna so, say you're I. putting someone in a defensive position yeah, as so opposed to I. listening. Gotcha. It's yeah. basically you, you being open and vulnerable. Like I feel right. Or like, right. Exactly. So doing that and kind of just like active listening skills. So I'm going to see if I can get some, um, if I can, I'm going to see if I can get you guys some materials on like, there's like specific active listening skills that you can use things like that. You know, I can pass your way and maybe you can figure out how to share it or I can just share it here. Like, listen, pay attention to the person. Don't zone out. And if you are zoning out, tell them like, maybe this isn't the right time. <laughs> Let's come back. I'm a little stressed. <laughs> I'm a little stressed because then you're going to get that. You didn't hear me. I said that 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. So there you go. Um, but no, so yeah. we, we, so we definitely uh, appreciated your time. We don't want to take any more of your time. Up. Yes. You've definitely. been wonderful mm. and Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Uh, next week, oh, next week or the, the next time you're available, we're happy we want to go over the, the opposite, the flip side of that question, uh, yeah, because uh, we definitely want to understand. We understand how our mind works now a lot more as men, uh, but we want to definitely understand how the female side works and what they think. And I, I think it's, mm -hmm. I think their love language and whatnot is completely different than ours to a degree. Yeah. Oh, you read that book? There's a book out there. Yeah, as a, as a, I've read the book, <laughs> but I've heard so much about it. Um, I, I've read. Yeah. You read it? The five love languages? Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about it? I haven't read it, but I, um, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll I think have it's pretty, list. I think yeah, it's pretty good. Um, yeah. You read yeah. It. yeah. Oh, hey, interesting. I found that thing for you, Ray. Wow. 
That's what you're looking for earlier, buddy. <laughs> try to outdo me. Go try to there's, actually, oh, there's a good book out there called State of Affairs, and it mm. breaks it down. Um, the white, but like you know, affairs and like the she. I haven't fully read it, so I don't know if it's more female oriented or men. But it, it just kind of puts a different light on it. As in, it's not you know, you're not a terrible human being for like. It's just something that that wasn't maybe being met, or it just kind of helps you learn. Use these opportunities to learn, right? Mm-hmm. So each of the, all of this is about self discovery. Um, what does it represent to you, right? So there's, I think that book, I don't know, I can't remember the author, but it's called State of Affairs. It's still, I think it's Affairs. on Kindle, it's on Amazon. Okay. Um, so check that out. And I, I haven't read it, so I, I'm not endorsing it. I don't know, but I do have it. It's on my list when I get a moment um, because I have a toddler, so I'm not always able to read a sentence. At a time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, she, yo, she's got a toddler that calls her her baby mama. Yeah, they call, yeah it's crazy. My it's cute, crazy my thing. cute baby mama. Yo, and yes. the fact, and the mama. fact that, and I asked her. I was, we asked her. We're like, hey, I'm like, did she pick it up from Fifty Cent? And no, but apparently she knows the rap. She knows some rap references that we just heard today, fellas. So obviously, yeah, no, he's probably heard me listening to. Yeah, I'm exactly. trying to get the clean. Exactly. I, I keep the clean version on, but I'm sure he's heard that or like. Well, that's that's the uh, reason. He, see, you heard the clean version. That's why he says "baby mama." He didn't say something else. So that's well, exactly really? why you don't. You didn't get yeah, the explicit I'm version. <laughs> I, I, I um I remember when I was like younger, like years ago, and had these young like little boy cousins, and I'd be like, we we're listening to you know, I forget what it was like very demeaning to women but when these songs back when it was like i think it was like the chronic the chronic was it the dr drake yeah yeah, the chronic, yeah. The chronic. Mm-hmm. so like you know the words are like i mean some them and, and so the, the b word was here and there like Every- I, and so I'd, I'd be singing it with them because they knew it but then i turn it down like but you guys know you shouldn't use this right like don't call women <laughs> they're like yep yeah, got it and then we went back to singing it so okay. that's, that's um i had funny. to do that <laughs> but um yes so i guess uh we'll aim for maybe i guess in, in two weeks or, or a month whenever uh, i think two weeks might be good uh, yeah because you're in the middle the of side. writing a, your book so yeah we're trying yes. to make sure you get to your deadline so yeah you, uh thank you it, yeah no you're welcome we're, we're, we're appreciative of your time yes we, very, oh. we, we are definitely yeah. we appreciate you <laughs> well thank you i appreciate you guys giving yeah. me the time and Absolutely. it's kind of therapeutic for me so i like it um <laughs> <laughs> but um awesome so we will connect i thank everybody who's listening and you know stay with yourself and accept the parts that scare you of yourselves those are the things that are telling you something don't push them away yeah so some wonderful words to live and uh leave us by let's love it so now, <laughs> what was that what was that quote i i, I think I, I still don't know who wrote it but you don't heal what cuts you you will bleed all over someone who didn't yeah, that was, that was me. That was me. I wrote that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I left that in the bathroom. Trademark that. I left it in the bathroom somewhere. We were at. We were going through well, North Carolina. You wrote it was, on a stall. Yeah, it, was it was in a stall, stall. Yeah, I was like, you know what? It was in a porta potty, wasn't it? No, 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 it was a porta potty. No, it was a stall, dude. Because you know what? It was just. It was like I went and it was like, oh crap! You know, I went because you know you don't want to. Sure, wasn't your twin brother? No, no, listen. It was. It was no, no. It was not a stall. Actually, I left it in the urinal. That's what right. It's called a urinal, right? Uh, urinal, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I think, I'm, Ray, I'm asking Ray. The urinal, you stand up and go. The urinal. Yeah, but there's a, there's a stall though. No, no. But listen, it was next to the stall. So I was going. See, oh, going to okay, public okay. one. You're like, oh, I'm going to stall because you're like, yo, I like to keep yeah. things private. So when right. I went to stall, it was like, damn, yeah. you know, this thing hurts. Just as long as you look because the hole, no, the dude didn't. You know, whoever was there didn't flush. It was like, yo, this cut, this, oh. this thing didn't heal. Well, oh, you know, man. whatever you know, how, you you know how it goes, right? Like, what, yeah, what you say again? What you yeah, what, what's my what's my quote? What's my, what's my, oh my gosh! The quote That's... is, and I will, and that is our time for today. Yes. <laughs> um, that'll be three hundred dollars. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, on that note, <laughs> Ray, hang up quick. <laughs> if you do not heal from what cut, from what, if you do not heal what cuts you, yeah. you will bleed all over someone who didn't hurt you. Exactly. And that's exactly what Just I thought that. about when I was like, if you do not see, I changed it. If you do not flush before someone mm-hmm. else comes in, then you're going to hurt the next person that comes in this stall. So oh that's gosh. what happened. Thank you. And I just right. Yeah, like getting rid of your waist. Get rid of that waist. There you go. <laughs> One way or another, right? That's, that's mental health, right? You got to get that toxic out. Uh, there but, you go. Get but, that out. <laughs> again, but thank you for that. We're not going to take up any more of your time. I uh, wish you and your um, your family a wonderful evening. 
thank you so much you too and we will like i said talk soon bye everybody have a great night you as well Pooja. good night thank you bye-bye wow uh <laughs> that was pretty damn informative it was it was a lot i mean okay. a lot of information she downloaded us with a a tremendous amount of information that i have to Go home and do some homework. Yeah, you actually got to go home and do some homework. Not only that, I got to self, I got to assess myself and see where I'm at. I mean, a lot of things she talked about, uh, being low on, on testosterone could affect your mental state, making you, you feel less like, you, you know, have energy, having energy throughout the day. And that could actually be something that's medical versus something that's mental or, or physical more so. Well, you need to, to, to testosterone yeah testosterone. yeah testosterone yeah it's just, my mom used to say that all the time she's yeah. like oh you got too much testosterone we used to get like <laughs> we used to buff up and she used to be like you know we started getting taller she used to be like oh you got some testosterone I'm like what the hell is she saying yeah so what, is, what if, is it yeah. if it's low i mean you're gonna have low energy levels uh yeah. not gonna be uh I, I would say as aggressive as you probably would you yeah know, normal basis um, yeah so i just had mine checked uh i want to say this year you really mm-hmm and my levels are normal. Okay. So right. I'm, I don't remember the, the, the exact number, but my levels are normal. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I've never had a just How did they check you? Check your blood, right? Obviously. Your blood, yeah. They check your testosterone mm-hmm. level. Wow. Because I had a whole blood workup uh, for, uh, I went to the doctor for uh, for a checkup. Okay. And they did a whole blood workup. I had to go twice. They thought it was something, my blood was off or something. Yeah, yeah. So did you just you just went up for a normal checkup and they found something that was irregular, yes, abnormal. Uh-huh. See, that's cr- so you normally go to the doctor and check yourself out. Well, I just started going recently because yeah, I go to the VA. Oh, okay, because it's pretty much it's prepaid for. It's almost provided. it's almost it's free for me. Yeah, got you. So, so there's no excuse. I take advantage of it. Gotcha. I mean, why not? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, beforehand though, I did not. Many, what happened that made you do that? Something must have happened that was close to you that triggered you to say, hey, let me get up and go to start going to the doctor. Oh, because uh, a buddy of mine had the VA and he just said, why don't you go to the VA? Oh. And I was like, I can use the VA? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just this, dude, this dude almost like he has a Walmart card and like, they use it. Like, I got a gift card and I can't use that? Yeah, you can use the VA. I mean... Bro, I hope you use that discounts when you go to a car or when you go to a dealership, when you go anywhere they give you a discount with that stuff. Yeah, so I I took him up on it and yeah. I got enrolled and man, I've been going ever since. Bro, even Lowe's, they say, "Are you are you in the service or you a vet?" So you you hope you take advantage I, of I, I your do. Discount. I I tell you I went and got an oil change one time and yeah. um, the guy was like, oh, I said I'm a veteran, do I get the 25% off?" and he was like, so he gave me a test. He asked me a few questions to yeah. see if I would cuz I didn't have an ID card on me. Got gotcha. you. And I, you know, I had to pass this test where he was, you know, what's your so-and-so? And I had to break it down. I said, well, in the Navy, we don't have that. And he was like, okay, you are in the Navy. Mm. So. Gotcha. No, that's pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. Um, like, I said, uh, anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed um, that information. Enjoyed Pooja. Because, like I said, she's going to be a regular that we're going to have. Well. Giving us her time, providing us her time. I don't hope they enjoyed it. I hope they use it because it was so useful. I yeah. mean, because sometimes information that you get is not always enjoyable. Yeah, it, that's true. You know, that's it, true. It, that's... I hope it hope it sank in and you guys are able to use it because, I mean, this is a, a professional who's giving you some knowledge right here. And um, just because they they like what we're trying to do, right? And they want to help, so take it upon yourselves. Talk to your better half. Get yourself together, get checked out, and do yourself a favor. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note, I think it's it's um it's good to say uh happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. <laughs> happy Thursday, guys. Uh you guys have a great weekend. Um and make sure to check out Friday Friday movie reviews. Uh we have a classic we're reviewing for Halloween. And on that note, man, you guys have a awesome weekend. Roll. Rants out.